What are the top five things that you can do today that are going to help you prepare and improve your defense in Madden 18? What's up guys, my name is Cody and in today's video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sharing with you my top five tips for defense in Madden 18 and what I like to do with this video is I like to give you guys just a, a brief five to ten minute video that's going to share with you the essential things that I believe are important for you to know going into Madden 18. Uh, so the first tip on our radar is blitz less. So um, um, one of the problems that I have had uh, is that I will try to blitz a little bit too much at times. I get I fall in love with my plays. I really enjoy blitzing. It's fun. But if I'm running the nickel normal, one of the things that I'm guilty of, just as and I'm sure all of you guys are, is I will sit in the nickel blitz and I will run it and 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 run it. And every single time that person will blitz off that right edge. Every time, every time, every time, every time. And what, in, what ends up happening after a while is when you blitz so much, your, your quarterback will start to leave guys in the block. So do something like this and he'll block everybody. Um, and then he'll just buy time in the pocket and hit you deep or whatever. He'll you know do something like that. What I'm saying is it's not because we want you to not blitz. We do want you to blitz. I th I believe in blitzing. I think it's a critical element. But what I would say is if you're blitzing more than 75% of the time, and by blitzing that means you're going to try to get a sack um, by blitzing someone off the edge. You've set it up kind of like a nickel blitz two type situation. If you're doing that. Then what I would suggest is to dial it back to about 75% of the time. Because what can happen is this. Um, once they know you're blitzing, they're going to block people. So we'll just block like we just did. And what's going to happen is the only people worth blitzing on this are the outside guys because they're going to be an edge. So, so then what you could do is you could sh really sure up your coverage in the middle of the field here by dropping these defensive linemen in the coverage, and then you can play you know, deeper coverage. This is going to now help protect against that deep side of the field. They're not gonna be able to get that ball in, and you're gonna be sitting pretty. And you're gonna be able to do that with different formations, different plays, obviously, but you, what you wanna do is what I, I call it, having um, you know, a bend but don't break defense off of your blitz, because what's gonna happen is the quarterback will throw the ball uh, because he's used to this blitz he's going to throw it quick okay and he'll throw it within three seconds but if you have everybody in coverage you can actually get pressure on your uh, your quarterback while staying in coverage it's called perceived pressure and i think that's something we need to take advantage of more in the community most people will blitz 90 to 90 to 99 percent of the time i recommend blitzing about 75 percent I've seen a lot of success with that this year. This was probably the first year that I did it uh, consistently where I had some plays that were not designed to get pressure. And I saw a big time increase in my defense. Uh, number four, again, I applied this principle this season and this really, really helped me a lot. Uh, and that is to focus on field goals, okay? So one of the things that I really believe in is forcing your opponent to settle for field goals. That means two things. That means having a really, really solid goal line defense, okay? And you want to put a lot of time into your goal line defense. That's your red zone. That's where once they get inside about the 10-yard line, that's the defense that you're going to rely upon. Um, but what I want to get at here is whenever the other side of that too is you can't allow – your opponent to make huge plays. So you can't go cover zero blitz very often. You know, things like that are critical because what that's going to do, it's going to force them to drive up the field. It's really going to do is it's going to force the offense not, they can't make mistakes, okay? And when you, when, what will happen is, I'm telling you right now, if you're mixing your pressures, you're doing all that, what's going to happen is they'll make a mistake or you'll make a really, really good user play and it's gonna make it's gonna make or break the game. But what you really want to do is try to focus on holding them to field goals. So that means number one, I focus on having a great red zone defense. Number two, I focus on having a good third and short defense to get me off the field in those situations. And then number three, you want to make sure that you are trying to make your opponent make a mistake, um, not trying to set him up to where he can make a big play. 
okay? So those are some ways that you can help focus on field goals. The next tip on our list, number three, that is this tip. I, I really believe this is one of the most powerful things you can do uh, with your defense is to get your lineup right. Uh, and what I mean by getting your lineup right is you want to take advantage of the depth charts. You want to work on your mutt squad. You want to get the right types of players for the right types of positions. Really what that entails is you want to start, you want to end, or excuse me, you want to start where you want to end up. So if I want to have a really fast guy at, line, at defensive tackle, then I need to know, okay, well, when I'm looking through, I'm probably not going to get a defensive tackle. I'm probably going to get a defensive end who has high speed if I'm playing mutt. What else you can do, though, is you can use packages. And this is one of my favorite things to do. You saw every, every game I used the linebacker rush package out of the nickel normal. I also frequently used it out of the – Four three under. What that can do is it can sometimes get some linebackers at nose tackle or defensive tackle. It takes your defensive ends and it places one of your defensive ends at defensive tackle. And that's something that you can really mess with because when you go into your depth chart, you can then set it up to where your defensive end is your defensive is your outside linebacker. Now all of a sudden you blink and you've got your roster optimized and you've got your players all where you need them to be. Because one of the things that I like to do is I like to drop my defensive tackles in coverage. Because personally, I believe that if I'm going to play what I call a coverage defense, they are the best players to do it because they stand the least amount of chance at getting pressure on the quarterback. So I will do something like this very often. You'll see this play from me. Uh, it's where we put the ends on a crash out and we just go into coverage. Okay, so that's, you know, what, I, what I'm trying to get at is mess around with your roster, figure out exactly how to w take advantage of your lineup and your packages that is an essential tip that most people overlook. Um, number two on our list, that's user the middle linebacker, and here's why. There, there's, I have, I have tried to user this guy here. I've tried to user this guy here. If you go to cover three, uh, you'll see that what happens is um, this guy's in a deep third. So some people would say you want to user this guy. I don't believe that. What I want to do is I want to user this guy right here. He's in the middle of the field. Okay, so whoever it is, in the four six normal, it's your strong, it's your safety, your free safety is that guy. But in the nickel and most and most defenses, it's your middle linebacker. And what you want to do is you just want you could take so many things away here. You can take the post routes away. You could take the streaks. You could take the in routes. You could take the slants. You could take a lot more routes away, in my opinion, if you work on work out of being the middle linebacker. Another thing it does too is it helps your blitzing. Uh, it's helped it this year. It will probably help it last year. If you just kind of sit in this A-gap, kind of jimmy him a little bit at the snap, it's going to help your pressure. You're going to get cleaner blitz angles, okay, because the center is going to be occupied by your middle linebacker, okay? It's just the way the game works. It's always worked like this. It's not just this year. It's worked in several other Maddens. The center is always the player that you're trying to isolate. And then the last tip. This is my uh, favorite tip and probably the most important that I could give to you. If I had one thing to say to any of you guys to improve your defense, it would be this. Simplify. Okay? Simplify it. What most people do is they, they get in the weeds. They try to find out. They look, uh, they, you know, they'll go through. They look for the dime. They're like, oh, wow, the three double buzz. I got to run that. Or, you know, free safety middle blitz. There's some crazy way to make it an A-gap blitz. Well, that's probably true. There are some cool plays. There are some cool things you can do. Generally speaking, I've never seen someone have success by running a fancy play. It's normally the same principles every season. It's like I just said with the blitzing. You want to find a blitz off the right edge, a blitz off the left edge that you can call from any coverage. So like for 4-3 under, if you, and if, you, if you watch, you're going through your formations. The plays are very, very similar. The only thing that changes is the formation. Like you have a corner blitz, you have a right right edge or right slant blitz, you have a left slant blitz, you have a mid blitz. That's always the same. Every formation you'll have it. Look, I'll show you nickel here. There's your left slant blitz. There's your uh, cor or slot corner blitz. Let's see if we can find. There's a, another left slant blitz. There's a corner blitz off the right edge. Um, I mean. Over and over and over again. There's a safety blitz. And then if we went to uh, nickel 335, I bet you'd find the same thing. There's a left edge blitz. There's a left uh, slant blitz. There's a right slant blitz. There's a mid blitz. 
there's a safety blitz. Like, it's it's the same every single time, no matter what formation you go to. And the reason I'm saying that is because I want to encourage you to keep it simple. I recommend running one formation, about five plays, uh, and that includes all of your adjustments. So think through strategically, what are the five things I plays I need to be successful? How do I incorporate all that in the same formation? And that will help you. Just to recap here for you guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. And remember, these are the top five tips. Number five, blitz less. Number four, focus on field goals as opposed to touchdowns. Number three, use packages and depth charts to make your lineup as optimal as possible. Number two, use the middle linebacker. And number one, my favorite and most important, keep it simple, simplify. The genius is not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing more to take away. Focus on the critical few and get the job done. Thanks for watching this video, guys. And for more Madden tips, you can subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe, subscribe button and we'll get you plugged in.